A woman has filed a sexual assault lawsuit against Christian Combs, Sean Combs' son. With the papers in hand, we now get into even more detail about these disturbing allegations, and we also have new reaction to these Combs lawsuits that sheds a new light. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Last week, we talked about how Sean Combs and his son Christian King Combs were hit with a lawsuit by a woman named Grace O'Markey. She claims that back in December of 2022, at 25 years old, she had been working as a stewardess on a private yacht chartered by Combs when she claims that she was drugged and sexually assaulted by Christian. Now, while we went over the lawsuit in our last episode, we didn't have the actual paperwork in hand. Now we do. So we want to do a deeper dive into some of these details. And there is a question about where this lawsuit even currently stands. Now, we know the timing of this lawsuit is very interesting, right? It comes after Combs or Diddy has already been sued by multiple people. The lawsuits allege sex trafficking, rape, assault, illegal drug and firearms possession, involvement in shootings and violence. And this new lawsuit comes two weeks after federal agents stormed Combs properties in L.A. and Miami, reportedly removing firearms, electronics, maybe other evidence. This was reportedly pursuant to an ongoing investigation into sex trafficking from the Southern District of New York. And Combs' sons, Christian and Justin, were actually handcuffed detained, not arrested, during that rape. We're going to get into that in a minute. Keep that in mind, that, that image, that visual. Now, while neither Combs nor his sons have been arrested or criminally charged with respect to this investigation, many analysts that we have spoken to believe it is only a matter of time before that happens. Okay, we have this lawsuit from Grace or Markey. And before we even get into the details of it, there is a question now of what is happening with this. Why do I say that? Because the filing was not on the court system's docket. According to the Washington Post, O'Markey's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, said that it had to be taken down after an unfiled version of the complaint was published by the media. So I don't know what to take away from that. If that means that what we reviewed last week wasn't supposed to be seen, not sure. But assuming this lawsuit does move forward, there is a lot to break down in it. Okay, first off, I have to say, now that I have the paperwork in my hand and I have the complaint in my hand, one of the things that struck me right from the beginning is how personal this is. Quote, Defendant C. Combs, that's Christian Combs, is a 25-year-old auto-tuned and heavily edited rapper. Wow. Unfortunately, as the saying has it, the apple does not fall far from the tree. Defendant Sean Combs, who has also been accused of several acts of sexual assault, rape, sexual violence, and drugging, among other deplorable conduct, is the father of Defendant C. Combs, who has seemingly taken after his father and the family business of reckless partying, drugging others, sexual violence, and other illegal conduct. That is... I mean, you usually don't see that kind of language in a lawsuit. Very, very personal attacks. Also, allegations at this point. Remember, Combs has not been criminally charged. He's not been found liable. These are allegations. But when they mention Christian, I have to highlight this too. They actually embed into the complaint, not a photo of him on the red carpet, not a photo of him on an album cover, not a photo of him taken by the media. They embed a photo of him and his brother being detained in handcuffs by federal agents during that raid. That is very intentional. Of all the photos to use, you are accusing him of sexual assault, and you use that photo? That was no mistake. Now, I am reminded by the fact that Miss O'Markey is being represented by not only Rodney Diggs, but as I mentioned, Tyrone Blackburn, Mr. Blackburn, is representing former Diddy producer Rodney Jones, who also filed a separate lawsuit against Diddy, his son Justin, and several others. He claims that he was a victim of sex trafficking and that he was assaulted and subjected to violence. So maybe it is not surprising we are seeing this language as he is representing multiple people accusing the Combs family of illegal conduct. We're going to get back into the merits of these lawsuits in a minute. But going back to the O'Markey complaint, Another interesting tidbit is that in addition to Diddy and Christian, there are several unnamed John Doe's and companies who are named as defendants as well. 
Well, Markey claims that these people and companies aided and abetted in the commission of the conduct described in the lawsuit, and that as the case proceeds, she may add their names later on. Now, Armarkey goes into some detail about what this environment on the yacht was like. She talked about how she worked the late night shift from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Quote, during the second week of the charter service, there was a significant amount of partying and drug use, which caused the guests to stay up throughout the night. The makeup of the yacht quickly evolved from just defendant S. Combs and his family to include a constant rotation of suspected sex workers and other A-list celebrities such as French Montana and actor Cuba Gooding Jr. Defendant S. Combs turned what was sold as a wholesome family excursion into a hedonistic environment. According to plaintiff, it resulted in an unexpected increase in workload for her and her colleagues, as well as unwanted exposure to unlawful drug use, sex work, and general chaos. She also claims that drinks were spiked by Combs and that women were taken advantage of on the yacht. And she argues that as a bartender, she understands the impact of alcohol. And she, quote, found it very suspicious that after one shot of De Leon tequila or one mixed drink, Various women on the yacht would be falling over themselves, panicking, or passing out. This led plaintiff, Grace O'Markey, to reasonably believe that the alcohol given to these women was likely laced with drugs. And she even describes one specific event in particular. Quote, according to plaintiff, in another incident, defendant S. Combs had several women whom plaintiff suspected of being sex workers on the yacht. In one incident, a girl was extremely upset and ran to the lower deck locked herself in the massage room, and was hysterically crying. She said she did not feel safe and wanted to leave. The crew was alerted of this. At this time, Sarah Chapman, one of S. Combs' children's mother, was due to have a massage, so plaintiff had to attempt to remove this young woman from the massage room, but she was very reluctant as she felt unsafe. Eventually, she left. All of this is important for Omarki's legal claims, namely that Sean Combs is liable for what his son Christian allegedly did to her. Why? Under the premises liability cause of action, and that, by the way, is where a property owner or someone who is in control of a property has a duty to use reasonable care to keep visitors of the property safe. According to Omarki, since Sean Combs leased, occupied, and or controlled the yacht and allowed who was on it and what was happening— This is his fault that she was sexually assaulted by his son. Quote, defendant S. Combs allowed and encouraged the people aboard his yacht, including his son C. Combs, to engage in the drugs and reckless behavior while aboard the yacht. Defendant S. Combs' negligence was a substantial factor in causing plaintiff's harm because of failing to properly use and secure the yacht and for fostering an environment for drug use and assault to occur without ramifications. So in the law... You need to show causation for this, but for what Combs did, this would not have occurred. We really have to show that you created a condition where it was foreseeable this would happen, that Combs knew or should have known this assault would happen because of the environment he created. You might be saying, okay, that seems like a strong claim. Maybe it doesn't. But then you have the aiding and abetting claim against Sean Combs too, quote, Defendant S. Combs knew that an assault, battery, sexual assault was being committed and was and going to be committed against plaintiff because he encouraged and fostered an environment and culture to his son and his employees to do whatever they want with plaintiff and the other yacht staff. And O'Markey goes on to describe how Combs covered up the assault, too, that he paid off the yacht captain to keep quiet, allegedly gave him a big tip. By the way, talking about that captain, O'Markey says that After she told the yacht captain, Pitar Milkov, about what happened to her, he, quote, berated her, lacked compassion or concern, failed to investigate, and insisted that she was probably voluntarily partying with the guest. She was not. She also says that, quote, Captain Milkov added insult to injury by assigning plaintiff to work in front of the house, which required personally serving defendant C. Combs while they were on the yacht. Now, imagine for a moment that She really is a victim of Christian Combs. That is really sinister stuff. But now let's go back to when Christian Combs allegedly drugged and assaulted Omarki. Remember, these are allegations at this point. And I explained a little bit of the background about this in our previous sidebar. But one interesting detail from the complaint that we didn't bring up 
is that according to Omarkey, when an allegedly heavily intoxicated Christian Combs came aboard the yacht on that night and went into the recording studio and started ordering tequila shots, Omarkey claims that Cassandra Ventura or Cassie's Me and You, that song, was playing in the background. What makes that, as Omarkey says in the lawsuit, ironic is that Cassie was a former artist and girlfriend of Sean Combs who filed that initial lawsuit against him back in 2023 claiming that she was physically and sexually abused by the rapper and producer. She ended up settling with him, but remember, that was the first lawsuit that began all of this. From there, we saw more lawsuits against Combs. We saw the raids. Now, that is a very specific detail for Omarki to remember that arguably adds to her narrative, right, and kind of adds a weird context to it. But I imagine that if she were to testify at trial about hearing this song, again, so specific, that would be challenged by Combs's lawyers. And they would say, you remember that? Is that awfully convenient? You remember that detail? Maybe you don't remember other things. So I guess uh, that could be something that she would, uh, or, or something that, that would be challenged. Okay, but now going back to this event. Omarki claims that initially she was forced to take tequila shots, that she wasn't allowed to leave. She claims that her drink was spiked. And she said that she was very scared and in a very dangerous situation with Christian Combs. Now, I'm not sure if this is a typo, but in the actual suit, it says that Sean Combs touched her legs, her breast, her private areas, and started kissing her on her neck, face, and hands. I'm pretty sure that's a typo uh, because it seems like she has been alleging that it was Christian who sexually assaulted her. She doesn't sue Sean Combs for assault or battery. So, again, I think this is a typo. And if it is, that doesn't look good. This is arguably one of the most important lines in this lawsuit. You mess up who you're talking about? But, I mean, I don't know what to make of it. But here is what we do have. Omarkey claims that Rodney Jones, as I mentioned, Diddy's former producer, now plaintiff, suing Combs for sexual assault in a separate lawsuit, that he was there on the yacht that night and actually recorded the audio of this assault, all, this whole episode happening. She provides a transcript of what she says is Christian Combs drugging and sexually assaulting her. I'm going to read it for you now. Christian, yo, it's shot o'clock. Grace, no, I'm not doing shots, Christian. Christian, everybody, we got to take a shot. In a second audio tape, Grace says, I'll just put the ledge. Christian, no, 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 take the whole thing. Grace, no, you will take it as well. Christian, take the whole shot. Grace, I'm only doing it as long as you take it as well. Christian, I ain't going to lie. I'm not taking nothing. Please, please take the shot. Grace, you are drugging me? Christian, take the shot. Hey, yo, play another beat one time because now and then there is a transcript of Christian's alleged sexual assault of Grace. Cassie's me and you playing in the background, allegedly. Grace, this is not an offer. Christian, you said what? Grace, I can't. I'm swapping out. I can't do it. I'm sorry, darling. Christian, nah, we need you. Grace, I'm going to stop. Stop. I have to go. I have to go. Honestly, I'm like already losing sleep. I have to go now. Christian, you're the best one on this ship, though. Grace, what do you mean? Christian, who's going to replace you? Grace, who's going to replace me? Christian, F that. That's going to be trash, though. You feel me? Grace, excuse me, you don't touch my legs like that. I'll move my legs where I want to. If I want to do this, then I will. You don't touch my legs like that. Christian, listen, you and everybody in the crew, it's great. Grace, I can't. I have to go down. I have to go down. Christian, no, you tell me. Listen, Grace, what? Christian, like say, Christian, like say you're just vibing with me the whole time. Grace, I can't. I promise you. I wish I could, but I can't. Unless I say that you guys requested me. Christian. Yes, who can I talk to right now? Who can I talk to? I'm going to say I requested you right now. Grace, well, you can take your hand off my ass for the first thing. Now, according to Grace in her complaint, or Miss Omarkey in her complaint, she basically says she was saying that he needed to get permission, um, and all the people that would give her him permission to hang out with her were asleep, so this was kind of a ruse for her to escape. It's a lot of legal issues surrounding the Diddy case. Makes you think about how important it is to have a great lawyer, right? Well, that is especially true in personal injury cases, which can be very, very tough to navigate. But enter Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, proud sponsor of us here on Sidebar. You know why they're so big? Because they win 
a lot. They are all about fighting for the compensation their clients deserve, even if that means having to take a case to trial. And they have secured multi-million dollar verdicts all across the country. I mean, recently, we're talking a verdict of $26 million in Philadelphia. That was higher than the highest insurance offer in that case, by the way. And when I say that, sometimes insurance companies, they lowball offers. But Morgan & Morgan, they don't settle for that. You need a big firm to take on these big companies. But also, there's something else that I always want to highlight when it comes to Morgan & Morgan, and that is that they have completely modernized the process to make it so easy for their clients. You submit your claim, you upload documents, you sign contracts, you talk to your whole legal team, all from your smartphone. That's it. Seeing if you have a case only takes a few minutes. Also, I should tell you with Morgan & Morgan, there's no upfront fee. Yeah, you only pay them if you win. Maybe not surprising that over 3 million people contact them every year. But look, if you're injured, you can start by easily submitting a claim at forthepeople.com slash LC sidebar or by dialing pound law. That's pound 529 on your phone. But moving on from that, as I mentioned in the previous sidebar, she explains how later on in the night, Christian allegedly trapped her in the cinema room in the yacht, groped her, and tried to force her to perform oral sex on him. She claims that she had to fight him off until her partner on board came by and Christian ran away. But now, in this lawsuit, in this complaint, there are embedded photos of Omarki's arm that appear to have bruises or discoloration. She claims this is from the attack. It is an important piece of evidence. But defense lawyers will ask, when were these photos taken? How do we know if it was caused by this and not something else? And so forth. Now, moving on, a big component of a lawsuit like this is to explain the harm that you suffered. That helps in terms of the damages calculation, what you are owed in, term, in terms of monetary compensation. So Omarki explains in the complaint that she loved yachting, even at an early age, that she traveled the world, that she enjoyed a successful career where she received high praise, great feedback, great reviews. But, quote, prior to being sexually assaulted by defendant Christian Combs, Plaintiff planned to work the entirety of her career in hospitality and the yachting industry. Unfortunately, those plans have been derailed due to the trauma plaintiff continues to have as a result of the assault. And let's talk about what Amarki claims here. She claims that 2023 was the most deeply traumatizing time of her life. She talks about how after the alleged assault and cover-up, she was isolated, she was retaliated against, and she was ultimately fired. She even lost her longtime partner. She says that her mental health significantly deteriorated to the point where she required medication and therapy and she fell into a deep depression. She claims that she couldn't even perform her maid of honor duties for her sister. She also claims that she developed a severe eating disorder, suffered from suicidal ideations, and even had seizures. So if she can prove that in a trial, that is going to be not only devastating testimony for Christian Combs and Sean Combs, but really important in terms of damages calculations. So she ends up suing Christian Combs for assault, battery, sexual assault, intentional and negligent infliction of emotional distress, and as I mentioned earlier, the other claims against Sean Combs as well. Now, I do want to call out something else from the lawsuit, some other mentions in the lawsuit. You remember Brendan Paul, who we talked a lot about here on Sidebar? He was listed in Rodney Jones's lawsuit as Diddy's alleged drug mule that supplied Diddy with narcotics and weapons. He was actually arrested on the day of the raids for drug possession at a Miami airport. Well, he is listed in this Grace O'Markey lawsuit too. Quote, according to plaintiff, defendant S. Combs' assistant and noted drug mule, Brendan Paul, once came down to the pantry and was laughing uncontrollably. He told plaintiff that he had to sit and watch defendant S. Combs have sex with multiple women. He said defendant S. Combs wanted him present just in case he needed him to get him something while he was in the middle of the act. Plaintiff questioned why Brendan would want to work for defendant S. Combs if he was required to do such things, and Brendan replied that defendant S. Combs was a good link to have in the industry. There's also an interesting section that mentions how A-list guests came on board the yacht. That includes a Philadelphia rapper, a 30-year-old Atlanta rapper who rose to prominence following the release of his 2017 mixtapes, a 25-year-old British rapper, a Moroccan rapper signed to Bad Boy Records and Maybach Music Group, 
and a former model and CEO of a female urban clothing brand. I'm not going to guess who these people are. If anybody online wants to do their due diligence, feel free to do it. Now, I will tell you who is actually mentioned, who is named in this lawsuit, Cuba Gooding Jr. He is not a defendant in this case, but he is mentioned. And we remember that Jones actually filed a lawsuit against Cuba Gooding Jr. He says that he was sexually assaulted by the actor on Diddy's yacht, by the way, actually accused Sean Combs of facilitating this abuse. But in this lawsuit, Omarki claims that Cuba Gooding Jr. was extremely unpleasant to serve, that he sat at the bar, made derogatory comments to her, that he was visibly intoxicated, and she was in the room and witnessed him inappropriately touching Rodney Jones. So she will be an important witness in Jones's lawsuit, and vice versa. Jones and Omarki are linked in a way, right? They both are there to testify to prove the claims of the other. So quite the lawsuit to say the least. But I got to give you some updates. Omarkey's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, he told NBC News, quote, it gives us no joy or pleasure in filing the suit against Christian Combs, who has clearly adopted his father's pattern and practice of depravity. While her other attorney, Rodney S. Diggs, also told NBC, quote, I am here to fight for those who can't fight for themselves, and I applaud Grace for being so brave to come forward with her truth. However, Aaron Dyer, an attorney for Christian and Diddy said in a statement that the lawsuit from Grace O'Markey was, quote, another lewd and meritless claim from Tyrone Blackburn. Quote, this complaint is filled with the same kind of manufactured lies and irrelevant facts we've come to expect from Blackburn. We will be filing a motion to dismiss this outrageous claim. Now, a motion to dismiss is when you say the plaintiff has not stated an actual claim, the door, like the court doesn't have jurisdiction or there's some other problem with the actual pleadings. That's how you get rid of it at the outset. Now, I had mentioned in a previous sidebar about how Mr. Blackburn was not only criticized by opposing counsel, but even a federal judge in New York who referred to him to the grievance committee for allegedly filing lawsuits that have deficiencies, that he improperly files cases in federal court to garner media attention and to embarrass defendants with salacious details. So keeping that criticism in mind for a moment, where we're talking about are these claims, are these allegations in these lawsuits credible? Just now, Instagram model Jade Ramey, who Rodney Jones claimed in his lawsuit was one of the people that Diddy allegedly bragged about paying to be a sex worker, She has fired back against these allegations from Rodney Jones. Through her publicist, through her publicist, Ramey told Entertainment Tonight in a statement, quote, dating someone doesn't directly correlate to any of the false allegations made. Yes, I dated someone. How unfortunate we've entered a time where caring for someone or falling in love is worthy of scrutiny in the court of public opinion. What may be amusing for you is real life for others, and my feelings have never been for entertainment nor are they up for discussion. We need to be more conscious as a society when ridiculing people's lives and relationships merely for enjoyment. I appreciate everyone's kind messages and support during this time. Thank you. Also, Sean Diddy Combs' ex-girlfriend, Young Miami, who Jones also listed as one of the people that Diddy claimed was a sex worker, denied the allegations too. Writing on Instagram, I'm not a prostitute. I never sold... And she has an emoji for, you can do the math, an emoji for her private parts. I never sold a day in my life. I hate how this is getting spun. And again, what do we make of these allegations? Serious allegations, but allegations nonetheless. And what about Diddy? In the aftermath of the lawsuits, in the aftermath of the raids, there are these videos and pictures of him that have surfaced in Miami, out, relaxing, holding up the peace sign. But he also just posted on Instagram the music video for his 1997 song, Victory, where he runs from police. And he wrote in the caption, bad boy for life, followed by a raised fist emoji. So again, these are all allegations in the suit. Neither Combs nor his sons have been found liable. They haven't been arrested or charged. But these are serious allegations, and we will continue to follow where all of this goes. 
All right, that's all we have for you right now here on Sidebar, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. Speak to you next time.